Hi, and welcome back. So I actually just finished, I, I just made the video on, uh, I know I've been uh, leading up to the video on the, uh, the uh, F block, um, on the, uh, the uh, F block uh, elements and their electron configurations, and I actually just made the video. And uh, one of the things I guess I, I just realized that I need to go over before you can understand some of what's in that video is I have to cover a type of notation that's called nearest noble gas or nearest previous noble gas electron configuration. And essentially what that is, is if we, let's say, I'll te go over this by example. Let's say we were figuring out the electron configuration for aluminum. We could write that as, let's just write it all out. For aluminum, what would it be? Well, we start out with our S block. So we start out with 1S2, 2S2. Then, where at this point we fill up our P orbitals, we go 2P6. We fill up our 3S orbital, so 3S2. So we're now right here. We're at, this is the configuration for magnesium. And now we just need one more electron in our 3P orbital. So our last entry is 3p1. Essentially, what we could have said, this is essentially what, what we could do, and it's a bit way of just saving space for how we would write out these electron configurations, is we could have said up until this point. So if we took these three entries, up 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, isn't this the same exact electron configuration for neon? Because it's got 10 electrons here, right? And that's how many electrons neon would have around it. It would have 10 electrons. So couldn't we write, if we didn't want to have, if we didn't want to write out all of this configuration, couldn't we just say that, you know, up until this point, aluminum has the same electron configuration as neon, but just a couple of extra things added on? And the answer is that, Yes, we can do exactly that. And essentially, what we would write is we would say that aluminum's electron configuration is going to be the same as neon. So we would put neon in brackets like that. And then we would just add on the extra stuff. We would just add on these extra electrons that are there beyond what neon has. So we would add on 3s2 3p1. And that's how, that's another way of writing out aluminum's uh, electron configuration. And you can see it saves a lot of space. And that's, that's essentially why, why you do it is because it, it saves, saves space. Let's actually do, let's do another one of these. I'm going to, actually, you know what, I'll just scroll up a little bit. We can leave, leave that there in case you, you want to see it some more. Let's do, let's do arsenic. Well, arsenic is down there. Its atomic number is 33. So arsenic. So if we were going to write it out, we'd have a whole bunch of stuff like this. You know, we'd have all of this, uh, all of this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. We'd have lots of those, lots of those entries of all the different orbitals and subshells. How about what would we write if we wanted to say the nearest previous noble gas. Well, first off, we would find the nearest previous noble gas, which would be argon, right? So argon would be our nearest previous noble gas. So we could say that arsenic's electron configuration is going to be the same as argon. So the same as argon. And so now we just have to add on the electrons that we would have past argon, right? So this is, and let me label my periods. I've got one, two, three, four, and we're in the fourth period. So what electrons would arsenic have past argon? Well, we have to start right here, right? We have to start with our 4s orbital. So we're going to say 4s, and it's going to be completely full. We'll have two electrons there. Next, we move to our 3d orbital. 
So we're going to completely cross here. And our 3d orbital is going to be completely full, right? So we have 3d10. And then we've got 4p10. Oh, we've got 4p123. So 4p3. So this would be, if we were writing arsenic's electron configuration, this would be how we would write it, using the nearest noble gas electron configuration. I'm going to do one, do one more of these. Let's say, let's say we're doing, I'll just leave that there and I'll write down, down here. So let's say we were doing, I don't know, let's say we were doing iodine. Iodine's right there. It's 53. Its atomic number is 53. So now we have to go and find what's our nearest previous noble gas. Well, it's krypton, right? So the nearest overall noble gas, if we were just saying the nearest noble gas, it would be xenon, right? But we need the nearest previous noble gas because we have to add the electrons on. We can't take electrons away from xenon, right? We have to find the nearest previous noble gas so we can add electrons on, right? So that would be krypton. So we would say that iodine's electron configuration is going to be the same as krypton's, the same as krypton's, but what are we going to add on? So this is the fifth period that we're in, so we're going to add on 5s2, and then we're going to add on all of our 4d electrons, so 5s2, 4d10, and now we have to add on our 5p electrons, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them, so 5p5, and that would be iodines. Uh, electron configuration. If we were using the nearest noble gas uh, or the nearest previous noble gas electron configuration. You can see we saved a ton of space. You know, uh, Krypton's overall electron configuration is really long. So, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, uh, you can see that this is, this will save a lot of space. Let me actually do one more. We've got a little bit of time. How about Let's even, we can even do this for a noble guess. Let's do it for, actually, no, let's do it for, uh, uh, actually, yeah, let's do it for, for, uh, argon. Let's do it for argon. So we can say that what is the nearest previous noble guess to argon? And it's, it's neon, right? So even though argon's a, a noble gas, the nearest previous is going to be neon. So we can say that argon's electron configuration is going to be the same as neon's, just plus a few things. So we're going to add on, so label our periods, one, two, three. So argon is going to be in the third period, so we add on 3s2. And then 3p6, right? Because we count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that would give us argon's electron configuration. And if we needed to count and like check how many electrons we had, we would just say, well, how many electrons does neon have? Well, neon's got 10 electrons, right? So we would just say, you know, okay, we need to add up and check how many electrons we have. So we would take 10 and then add 2, that gives us 12, and add 6, that gives us 18 electrons. And that's how many we want. That's how many we want in argon. Or, or in, uh, so, so anyway, hopefully that, uh, that makes sense to you. In the next video, I am finally going to talk about, about the F block. And uh, uh, I guess uh, one, one word of warning, if you don't understand necessarily about the F block, it does, it is going to essentially follow the same rules that we've been talking about for electron configurations, but it's, there are going to be more exceptions. Uh, and one thing I would say is if you don't understand 
the video when you watch it on the F block, don't worry. We're, we're at least if you, uh, or I should say, if, if you're in a general chemistry one class or you're preparing for a general chemistry one class, uh, don't worry too much. Most, or at least my general chem one class didn't spend a ton of time on the F block. Uh, and I guess I should also say if you are going, if you know that your class is concentrating on the F block, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you might want to, uh, 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 check out the Khan Academy. Khan Academy, uh, has got, has got some good videos on, on the F block, on, on elements in the F block. Uh, so anyway, uh, hopefully, hopefully you found this video useful and the next video we are going to start talking about the F block. So I'll see you soon.